the new video that MSNBC uh, has just received of uh, the first President Bush and former First Lady Barbara Bush arriving in uh, Houston where they are touring the uh, Johnson NASA Space Center. Of course, uh, this is their home state of Texas and they're going to be paying their respects to the, uh, the, the members aboard, the seven astronauts aboard uh, Columbia, of course, today. And we'll follow the very latest on, on that for you. Now, though, let's go back to Pat and Bill in Washington uh, for more Buchanan and mm -hmm. Press. Gentlemen. Okay, Christy, thank you very much. Of course, the two areas impacted for NASA, particularly around Houston, the Johnson Space Center, and down in Florida, the Kennedy Space Center. We're joined right now by a fresh member of Congress from Florida, Republican from Florida, Congressman Tom Feeney, who represents Cape Canaveral where, of course, the Kennedy Space Center is located. He uh, joins us by phone from Florida. Congressman, thank you for joining us. I know that uh, you've had a chance to speak to many of the officers and families around NASA there in your district. What is their mood today, Congressman? Is it one of despair or one of determination? No, despair wouldn't be accurate. Uh, good afternoon, Bill and Pat. Mm -hmm. There's obviously a great deal of sadness, not only for the individual astronauts and their families, but for the NASA family. And that's an extended family, including a lot of subcontractors and other uh, employers that are dependent upon our space uh, program, including my wife, who spent 18 years as an engineer down at the Kennedy Space Center. No, the mood is uh, somber, it's sad, but it's also very determined. I mean, the bottom line here, from top to bottom, everybody affiliated with the space program says, find out the problem, make sure we get it right, fix it, and get back into manned space flights. It's a mood of serious uh, de determination. Tom, uh, Pat Buchanan here. Your wife works over at Cape Canaveral at the Kennedy Space Center. Is there a feeling, Tom, that uh, there is going to be a long moratorium on these space shuttle flights as there was after the Challenger uh, went down in 1986, and that it'll be a long while, maybe a year or more, before there's manned flight out of uh, the Cape again? You know, Pat, nobody can tell until the investigation is complete, but I would say there's a huge sense of optimism among the leadership here that we're going to be able, in relatively short order, to identify the problem, fix the problem, and get back up servicing the international space system. And to be honest with you, Pat, like in any science project, you often learn a lot more from your failures than your successes. Uh, that's been true in the space program as well. I would say that there's a lot of optimism. We're talking a delay of weeks, perhaps months, but uh, hopefully not years. You mean they're talking a delay only of weeks before a... Uh, there's only three sp uh, shuttles left, I guess, uh, Atlantis, Discovery, and Endeavor, and they're talking only a period of a few weeks, you say, before one of these shuttles can be launched up to resupply or bring parts up to expand the International Space Station? Well, I'm talking about how long the delay is going to be. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, the, the mm -hmm. first week of March was the in expected uh, takeoff of Atlantis. With a little luck, if we can, with moral certainty, identify what the problem is and get a fix put in place, Pat, uh, we may be a delay beyond that first week of March of only a few weeks, the uh, best-case scenario. The worst-case scenario we're hoping would be months. Uh, obviously, to have to wait years means pretty much a shutdown for mm -hmm. some significant time of the program. Yeah. I will tell you, at an 1130 briefing today where I attended with uh, General Bridges, 500 NASA employees in person and thousands uh, joined us teleconference throughout Kennedy Space Center, uh, the good news was uh, delivered to the employees that there is no shutdown right now in preparation of Atlantis for maintenance of the shuttle fleet. The only thing they've stopped is some um, upgrades on Pad A, which is the pad that Columbia took uh -huh. off from. And that's only so that the investigators can get out there and secure mm -hmm. any evidence that they might need. Mm -hmm. Congressman, you haven't been in Congress that long, so we can't blame you, but there's been a lot of talk about NASA's budget not being adequate. The president announced today he's adding another $500 million, but that still basically leaves the funding almost the same as it was last year. Have you had a chance to look into it? Do you think uh, NASA's being forced on a shoestring budget here? Well, I'll tell you, I've been the Speaker of the House the last two years and a leader for the last uh, several before that bill. And uh, in many ways, the program has been underfunded in terms of new programs, in terms of maintenance of facilities, infrastructure. But uh, we're talking buildings, equipment. We're talking basic in infrastructure. There has been no compromise with respect to security. All of the scientists, all the NASA people say safety has always been job one. Remember, to a large degree, it's former astronauts like Roy Bridges, like Bill Reedy at Kennedy Space Center, that are ultimately running the Kennedy Space Center here, the last thing they would ever do 
is to make a deliberate determination to save a few dollars that would endanger lives of astronauts or anybody else. So I don't think that the money problems have impacted safety mm -hmm. directly. Okay, Congressman Thanks, Tom Congressman. Feeney, who represents that terrific community down there at Cape Canaveral, folks, has just been talking with us on the phone. Thank you very much, Tom. We appreciate it. Upcoming, folks, Ron Insana is yes. going to give us a report from Wall Street where the market first done on uh, in the space program allowed those technologies to be brought directly to uh, brought directly to the general public so that those technologies first employed in uh, space exploration or even looking at the even looking at the structure of the airframe to check for uh, fatigue in the metal and so on and so forth could then be applied to the human body so we can get a much clearer picture a much more detailed picture inside the body much better than x-rays so there's one very clear uh, uh, application, uh, and probably the other one that is most directly connected to people is the use of miniaturized electronics. If you have a cell phone or a laptop computer or any of those things which we all now consider to be indispensable, those miniaturized electronics also come directly out of the space program. Okay, thank you for that answer, and we are going to take a break right now, and as we go to... Devices, ...through our comments and through our reviews uh, of their lives, and through our comforting of, of their families. That was the new Senate Majority Leader, Dr. Bill Frist, commenting on the loss of the Columbia and those seven brave astronauts on Saturday. One tragic note about the loss of the Columbia is just a few days ago, January 28th, the seven astronauts aboard the shuttle Columbia paused for a few moments to remember their colleagues, the seven astronauts that lost their lives aboard the shuttle Challenger 17 years ago. And Pat, five days later, uh, they suffered the same mm -hmm. fate. And I think for most of us, Pat, when we heard, first heard about the Columbia, it triggered memories of Challenger, uh, particularly for you or in the White House when that happened. Exactly. We just showed here, we talked about this, this incident, and here's the photograph. I went, into the, I went into the Oval Office. I was informed when I was at a meeting in the Roosevelt Room with all the Rather and Brokaw and all the anchormen, which we do the day of the State of the Union. Then the President comes in and speaks. So I was hosting the lunch, and the president was in the Oval Office, and an aide came into me in the Roosevelt Room and said, the shuttle just blew up. And so I went over to the Oval Office, and I said, walked into the Oval Office, and the president was there in the meeting with all these folks, and I said to him, Mr. President, the shuttle just blew up. And he said, isn't that the one with the teacher on it? Mm. And so we all got up together, and we moved into the next room and looked at the television set, and this is the Crystal McAuliffe flight. I think that sure. is she right there. There she is, right. And we all went in and watched the, re the repeat on national television again and again of the explosion. I think it was only uh, a couple of minutes into that flight uh, as it was headed down, uh, as it was headed down range when it exploded. And we watched it again and again. It was a uh, horrific tragedy. And Saturday, I'm listening to the radio, there and all of a sudden they say we have lost, con they've lost contact with Columbia. And I said to myself, there's no way they can survive if something's happened up there at 200,000 feet. It's a, it's a horrific feeling, and it's very sad and tragic. As you say, and I'm going to talk in my commentary, we've got to proceed. You're going to have manned space flight, but we've got to take a look at this vehicle. I do want to say, Pat, uh, I wouldn't say that he's Reagan-esque, because President mm -hmm. Reagan's comments that day, I don't know whether you wrote them or well, not, no, uh, were, were, mag were magnificent. But when the president came out Saturday, I thought he hit the, absolutely the right tone. You know, the people really look to the consoler in chief right. at, at this time, and only the president of the United States can, uh, States can express, I think, what people are feeling. And I thought the president did that very well, citing from the prophet Isaiah, you know, uh, and saying, you know, that these people are, they may be lost to us, but they're not lost. And he looked grim because he had just talked, I believe, to the families just before he went out there, which is a very tough thing to do. The president's got a very, very tough job in circumstances like this. Indeed. Okay, when we come back, folks, it's Pat's commentary. Pat, a final few words on the loss of the shuttle Columbia and those seven brave astronauts. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Buchanan and Press, MSNBC, America's News Channel. More astronauts are dead. The United States is going to continue with its conquest of space. We're going to continue with manned flight. But some questions have got to be answered and answered now. Is the shuttle the vehicle to take us into space when we've lost two of our five ships already. Can unmanned space vehicles do some of the work? Do we need seven astronauts on each of those shuttle flights? Is it time, maybe, to look forward to the new space plane?
the space shuttle of the future, the spaceship of the future. All of these questions need to be answered before we send more astronauts back up into space on that shuttle. We're going to stay in space, but we need some answers first. Thank you, Pat. Thank you folks for watching today.